Hey, this is John Lee Dumas of Entrepreneur on Fire, and I am the one. Entrepreneur Edition, a show that explores the journey of business owners who decided to be the one to make life better for the people that they serve. I'm your host, Sonia Thompson, and today's guest is John Lee Dumas. John is the founder of the podcast Entrepreneur on Fire, a seven day a week show that interviews inspiring entrepreneurs. Since launching his podcast back in fall of 2012, John has built an empire that averages $250,000 in monthly revenues. He does this through sponsorships, his flagship product, Podcasters Paradise, and other offerings. We can learn a ton from John's business savvy and his approach to building his business. So I am ecstatic to share with you his story and the lessons he's picked up along the way. But before we dive into the interview, I want to let you know that this episode is brought to you by Try Business School. Get the information you need to build the business of your dreams, step by step. Visit trybizschool.com, that's trybizschool.com, and get started with your free e-course, the four people you need to build a successful business. Now, let's get to it. Here's John. Hey, John, thank you so much for joining me today. It's so great to have you. It's awesome to be here, Sonia. I can't wait. Oh, let's go ahead and dive right in. Now, for those people, those few people who may not have listened to your show yet, tell us a little bit about Entrepreneur on Fire. So Entrepreneur on Fire um, is currently in its 1,000th episode stage. We just uh, Recorded actually episode 1031, which is pretty exciting, um, but that's recorded. So we're actually live at about 970, which is cool. Um, but we've been around for a couple of years. Um, it's a daily show interviewing today's most inspiring and successful entrepreneurs. Um, we've been having a blast now, again, for coming up on three years, which is crazy to think. One best of iTunes 2013. Uh, we're consistently generating over 1 million listens per month, and we built a pretty viable business around it as well with over a 250K on average of monthly revenue. So pretty cool stuff. Very cool stuff. Uh, so you're doing super well now, maybe even better than you first imagined. But whenever you first got started, what was the problem that you saw that you decided you were going to solve with this show? There was a very clear problem, and for me... I was in a job I didn't like. I was driving to work every single day, sitting in the cubicle for nine hours, driving home, hitting the gym, looking to consume content that inspired me. And you know, it was audio books, which I loved, but that got expensive. So I became a lover and a consumer of podcasts. And I started to find a few of these shows that were interviewing inspiring entrepreneurs and talking about their story and their journey. But these shows were once a week, twice a month at most. And hey, I'm driving to work every single day and I'm driving home too. I need more content. So I went, I went home and I searched iTunes for a daily show. I was like, there must be a daily show out there. I mean, why wouldn't there be? I want to consume a daily show. There must be other people out there. Didn't exist. I couldn't believe it. I decided to take a cue from Gandhi and uh, be the change that I wanted to see in the world and hired a mentor, quit my job, invested in myself, both time and money and launched a seven day a week podcast back in September of 2012. That's awesome. Now you just mentioned that you hired a mentor. That was one of the first things that you did. Why was that such an important first step for you? I was clueless. I didn't know anything about producing podcasts. I only knew how to press the play button. I wasn't a tech guy. I had no interview experience, no broadcasting experience. I had no online presence whatsoever. I mean, my previous careers were an army officer, uh, a law school dropout, uh, corporate finance, commercial real estate, like nothing was anywhere near the realm of me having skills that I needed. So I looked to somebody who was where I wanted to be, a successful business podcaster. Her name was Jamie Tardy of The Eventual Millionaire. She had been creating that podcast for a couple of years at that point. I reached out to her, told her I wanted to invest in myself with her as an apprentice, as a mentee, she took me on. And at that point, uh, you know, things really started getting, getting off. Oh, very cool. 
Whenever you first got started, as you mentioned, you didn't have an audience um, just yet, but you were still able to land really high profile guests like Seth Godin, Gary Vaynerchuk, Barbara Corcoran. Uh, were you nervous about reaching out to them and asking them to be on their show? And if you were, how did you get over that? Terrified. I was freaked out. I was paralyzed. And, you know, I had to again, I, well, I have to thank my mentor for giving me that courage. She's like, hey, like I've had these people on my show. They're human beings. Like reach out to them. Let them know you're, you've been mentored by me. You know, show them what your numbers are. You know, give them a screenshot of where you're ranked in iTunes, which at that time for, for new and noteworthy, I was number one in business. You know, give them your listens, how many listens you're getting per episode and per month. And just be honest with them and share some of your past guests. So I didn't start going after Seth Godin, Tim Ferriss, Gary Vaynerchuk, Barbara Corcoran, I started with, you know, some people that I'd met at conferences that Jamie had taken me to because mm -hmm. she was speaking at these conferences and she was friends with these people like the Pat Flynn, Cliff Ravenscraft, Michael Hyatt's of the world. And so, you know, they weren't and, you know, still aren't at that, you know, Seth Godin, Tim Ferriss level, you know, but they're still very significant. And, and Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, has heard of these successful entrepreneurs and has actually been on, you know, Pat's show multiple times, et cetera. So being able to then point to the foundation of the podcast that I built, the 40 interviews and some really, you know, B to B plus level entrepreneurs that I had had on, all of that combined to where I could then reach out to the A-listers and say, hey, love to take 25 minutes of your time for an interview to reach, you know, a pretty powerful audience. Very cool. Now, uh, I heard on an interview that you mentioned uh, whenever you were working with Jamie, your, your mentor, that she wasn't necessarily so keen on the idea of doing mm -hmm. a, an everyday podcast. So, um, but you stuck to your gut and now you have it and it's, you know, done so well. What caused you to stick to what you really wanted to do, what was in your heart versus listening to the advice of your trusted mentors? Yeah, I think this is a great question because it really encompasses what you need to focus on when you're first starting as an entrepreneur. Number one, if, if you're like me, you're inexperienced, you don't have the knowledge, you don't have um, you know, just the understanding of the path you need to take. And that's why hiring a mentor is so critical on so many levels. And Jamie gave me that. Another step that I took, Sonia, was I invested in myself with a mastermind at a very high expense. And that was Cliff Ravenscraft's podcast mastermind. I did both of these things and they were really important steps in my journey and I learned so much. And the information I got from Jamie and from Cliff and from my mastermind members was invaluable and I applied 90% of it. But the reality is I knew in my heart of hearts that the show that I wanted was a seven day a week show. That's why I had this whole idea. That's why I was getting into this podcasting thing. That was gonna be my UVD, that unique value distinguisher. I needed that distinguisher to really set me apart because I wasn't gonna have the skills. I wasn't a good interviewer, I wasn't a good host. I didn't have the audience. I didn't have any credibility or authority. I didn't have, I needed something that was gonna set me apart. And I knew that the daily was just that. And Jamie came at me and said, John, you're gonna get burnt out. You know, I've been doing a weekly show and that's insane. You know, I barely have enough time. Uh, Cliff said the exact same thing. Like, Your listeners are gonna get burnt out. You're gonna run out of guests. And the reality is, I just, I knew in my heart of heart that they were wrong. You know, number one, you know, Jamie is a mother. She has a family. She has other priorities and focuses. I was going to go all in with this. Like, this was going to be my life for a while. This was going to become my baby for the near term. And so there were certain things, again, that I, that I knew I had to listen to from my mentor and mastermind members. But then there was specific things I had to put those blinders on and just laser focus and say, I know in my heart of hearts, in my gut, my intuition is telling me a seven day a week show is why I'm doing this. So I'm not going to walk away from that. You know, it would have been a red flag for me to just kind of say, okay, you know, like let's go and do a weekly show because, you know, to me, that's what everybody else was doing. And then how was I going to distinguish myself? So, you know, the answer to that is number one, 90% of what my mentor and mastermind and Cliff and Jamie told me was so invaluable and so priceless. But that 10% of what I knew had to be the core, I had to stay true to that. And I launched. And you know, now, not only do I do a seven-day-a-week podcast every single week, I do a seven-day-a-week podcast one day a week because I have the systems and the structure 
in place where every Tuesday I'm doing eight back-to-back -back interviews. And Sonia, it's a long day. Yeah. I'm back-to-back, -back and you know that was yesterday. Um, by the end, I'm ready for a little, you know, scotch on the balcony to unwind a little bit. But the reality is, you know, I've I've done it. That's my one day that I brought the energy, and the other six days I can focus on other parts of my business. You know, like chatting with you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> now, uh, how did you set those systems up uh, that allows you to be so efficient with your business from day one before you started, or is that something that has evolved as you've continued to grow over these past few years? It's definitely evolved. I had really no systems when I first started. I had to learn as I went. I had the idea that I needed a system, but the only way for me to form one was actually understand how the system was going to work, and that was by doing the thing. You know, and, and to be honest with you, at first, I had to be incredibly flexible and just be willing to interview other people whenever it worked for them because the first 40 interviews, I didn't even have a live show because I was looking to stockpile 40 before I launched so that I could maintain that daily podcast, which is really critical to my business. So I had to, you know, be very flexible because I had a show that hadn't proven itself, hadn't launched. People honestly didn't even know if it would launch. That's just, it happens sometimes. I've been interviewed on shows that have never ended up launching. It's just a reality of life. Um, so they, they took a chance on me. And so I had to be flexible and interview at random times and random days. But then once the show took off and really had a lot of success and I started having a lot of inbound requests to be on the show, then I knew that I could really take control. And I started taking control as quickly as possible. And now to share with you some numbers, I get over 150 inbound requests per month of wow. really successful entrepreneurs wanting to be on Entrepreneur Fire. So, you know, I have more than five times the amount of inquiries that I can even have on my show. So, you know, the idea that like that a lot of people have, like you're going to run out of gas or you're going to do this or that, that's, that's never going to happen. That's mm -hmm. just not going to happen because there's an absolute infinitive number of amazing people out there. I mean, the reality is I can only have 365 people a year on my show right. when I could be having 3000 people a year on my show. If you know, there was enough days in the year or hours in the day for me to do such a thing. Um, so long story short, my systems evolved into what they are now, which are very regimented. And I'm able to dictate that because I got to that tipping point. So you can't start there from day one, but you can look to get there as a goal. Yeah. Now you, I just mentioned that you go at a really um, high pace with doing a daily show. You've got the systems in place to help you, but you're still working hard, cranking things out, cranking a lot, a lot of value for your audience. How, what gets you through the high highs and the low lows that come <laughs> with entrepreneurship? Because it always, sometimes you just want to, take a nap or, or, you know, just kind of relax a little bit. How do you manage all that? Yeah, well, I do take naps on the other six days of the week that I, that I have off, so to speak. So that allows me, you know, six of the seven days to be able to do those kind of things, to step back, to take breaks, to take a walk in the bay here in San Diego, to kind of get out on the balcony and maybe read a book that I've been enjoying. And not always a business book, sometimes just, mm -hmm. you know, a fiction book that I'm enjoying reading on whatever the subject might be. Um, so I think that's really important is to say, you know, there's, there's really, it's important to look at your entrepreneur, entrepreneurial journey as a balance. It has to be balanced. You know, I have a very specific morning routine that I stick to, you know, nothing happens here on the computer until I've taken care of my 35 minute power walk, you know, my strength, my strength training, which is short, but sweet you know, making some bulletproof coffee, you know, which I'm actually sipping on my third cup today of, um, you know, hydrating with water, you know, which I do every single morning. I take that inner bath mm -hmm. as well as the outer shower bath, you know, and, and really making sure that I'm putting the right things in my body. So I check those blocks first before I start checking the blocks of what I call OPA, other people's agenda, which is what email is, which is what social media is. And that's fine. That's part of your business. But it has to be, you know, your agenda has to be taken care of first, and then you can move into other people's agendas. Very cool. Now, what has been your biggest lesson learned as you've been going through building this business? Relationships are everything, totally. And that's the huge benefit of doing a daily show, honestly, Sonia, is that I, instead of just talking to four amazing entrepreneurs per month, which is what a weekly podcast would be, I'm talking to 30, and I'm making real relationships. And you know, I now have over a thousand guests that have been on my show that I've talked to, that I've built relationships with. And that just is unbelievable, the amount of relationships that you formed. And, and that's why 
podcasting is so amazing because you know here you are now like you and i we never would be able to just jump on a call and just have a 25 minute conversation you know frankly because you know it's tough because you know that's all i would be doing if if i let that happen but you know you have a great show you're building an audience and now we can jump on this call and and be one-on-one -on -one. you know it's just you and me in the room right now but you know we can build a relationship and you know and and now you know when i see you at a conference or xyz i mean you know we have that and that that will always be there absolutely well, i look forward to seeing you at podcast movement uh coming up Cheers. Soon. <laughs> that'll be fun yes. Fort worth baby yes now what would you say are your three keys to success because people have a really hard time choosing just one yeah so i do have three ingredients to success okay. which you know is even a little more detailed than keys and at the same time it's it's simple though because i like to keep it simple and that's kind of maybe my fourth key that i'll sneak in first is that kiss you know keep it super simple we try to overcomplicate things that's always a mistake so my three ingredients number one is you need to deliver free content it's free it has to be free because when you start off you know I'm not a credible, I don't, I don't have any credibility. I'm not an authority figure in any specific area. Like there's no reason that people should take time out of their busy days to pay for my content or to do anything that, you know, but if I create, you know, free content, then at least it gets it a chance to get in front of people. So that's ingredient number one. What's your free content? For me, it's the podcast and the blog, et cetera. Number two, it has to be valuable. And this is a really incredible, incredibly important point because I wasn't able to deliver valuable content when I started, and most people aren't, and that's okay. Like, I didn't really have any value to share because I was just starting off on my journey, and I was clueless. But because of the format of my show, because I made it an interview-based podcast, my guests had value to share from day one. So that was really important that I could have a, a, a podcast that delivered value from day one because of the guests that I was bringing on who had credibility, authority, and value. And then number three, and this is the ingredient that everybody gets wrong. Do you know what I'm going to say, Sonia? I'm not sure. <laughs> Relationships. Consistency. Oh. <laughs> you have to be consistent because no matter how free, you know, and how valuable it is, I mean, free is free, but no matter how much free and how much value you're giving, if you're not consistent, you're not going to be able to build an audience because they don't, they're not going to be able to know, like, and trust when you're going to deliver value. And they're going to say, Oh, I thought that he was doing a podcast every Wednesday, but I see he hasn't for the last couple of Wednesdays. He must, you know, he must have stopped, unsubscribed, and they're they're gone from your universe now, and you're never getting them back. Consistency is that third ingredient that people have to add to that mixture to be successful. Very cool. Now, what can we expect to see from you in the future? A lot more of that, of those <laughs> ingredients. Very good. You know, again, go back to KISS. Keep it super simple. I know what works. I want to be better at the basics. I want to continue to deliver free, valuable, and consistent content. You know, a great example for podcasters, it's been amazing for our business, is in early January, I created freepodcastcourse.com. Mm -hmm. A lot of people told me not to do it. They said, John, you're going to cannibalize Podcasters Paradise, which is our paid podcasting community. Mm -hmm. And they said, who's going to join Paradise when you can join your free podcast course? And I said, well, listen, if I don't create a free podcast course, you know, somebody's going to create either a free or a much cheaper than Podcasters Paradise podcasting course. So why not be that person that's leading the way? And so I created an awesome, really high quality, really valuable course that people can sign up for completely for free. And they go to freepodcastcourse.com in 15 days. They've learned how to create, grow, and monetize their podcast. It's a complete course. It's not a cliffhanger. It, it begins and ends. You will launch your podcast, if you so desire, by the end of that course. Now, we do offer Podcasters Paradise to people after they finish the course. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people take us up and they join. But a lot of people don't, and that's fine too. But that's the kind of stuff that I love doing. And so we did the exact same thing with another course called thewebinarcourse.com where we teach people how to create and present webinars that convert in 10 days. And people, we've had over 8,000 people subscribe to that. We've had over 14,000 people subscribe to free podcast course. So it's been massively successful. We built huge audiences by delivering free, valuable, and consistent content. And I want to continue to do more of that. Very cool. John, this has been great. Um, where can people connect with you? So all the magic happens at eofire.com. 
Um, or if you want to get you know really crazy, you can try to spell the word entrepreneur <laughs> and go to entrepreneuronfire.com. But obviously, eofire.com will get you to the same place. And that's where we have all our free trainings, all of our podcasts, you know, Kate writes killer blogs that are there um, multiple times per week. Great resources. It's just basically a one-stop shop for entrepreneurs, and we, and we definitely are proud of what we've grown there. Yeah, it is a pretty tricky word to say sometimes and spell. <laughs> and spell. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, before I let you go, I do have one bonus question for you. Uh, if we were to find you at a karaoke bar, what would be the song we would most likely be to hear you singing on the stage? Baby Got Back. Ah, Sir Mix-a-Lot. Got it. <laughs> Very I was actually awesome. random, random. I was actually just at the Del Mar Fair here last night in, in California. Mm -hmm. And that song was being played by one of the vendors. And I was like, I haven't done that song in karaoke in way too long. So pretty random. Very cool. Very cool. Well, John, thank you again for joining me today. You've dropped lots of great information that we can use directly to apply to grow our businesses. So thanks again. Thanks, Sonia. John dropped lots of great information on us that we can totally start applying to build our own empires. But there's one thing in particular that stood out to me that was a key driver to his success. And that brings us to today's I Am The One Challenge. It's great to learn from the experiences of others, but you've got to apply the lessons if you want to make them work for you. So based upon John's insights, here's today's challenge question for you. What is your unique value distinguisher, or your UVD, as John put it? In many instances, you won't be the only one who's trying to solve your customer's problem. So what is it about you and your business that's unique that will make your ideal clients flock to you? Think about it and then head on over to IamTheOne.fm and let me know your answer. Leave it in the comments on the show notes page or even tweet me at Sonia E. Thompson. I'll be on the lookout for your note. Until next time, keep working on building your dream business so you can make life better. Somebody's waiting on you. Thanks for watching.